So how does Vietnam compare to its neighbors, places like Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, places where you may see yourself living well? Let's start with some of the negatives. So noise, noise is a real issue here and I've never been to a more noisy country in my life. And as you could probably hear as I'm going around, everybody deep in their horns relentlessly for no real reason. So that does get a little bit annoying after a while. Not so bad if you work from home, but if you want to get out into the traffic and get around, then you need to leave your kind of Western way of thinking that someone's beeping a horn and they're shining at you. It's actually just half of the course here, but still it is pretty irritating. Also things like construction, animals, dogs, roosters. There's a real abundance of construction here. You know, Vietnam is on the up. It's a booming economy, apparently. There's a hell of a lot of construction going on. And the construction may not fit in with your sleep pattern. So let's just say, especially on the bigger developments, they will work for the night. Or they will start at 6 a.m. seven days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Vietnam, uh, the, the construction workers will live on the construction site. So they're literally, you'll see these construction sites with like some tarpauling over it. And there'll be three or four guys living under there for three months, literally living under a sheet of plastic. And they're there to finish that project. They bring them in from like the, the Mekom, from the smaller provinces. They don't put them up in hotels. And they just, yeah, they just literally live to build whatever they're building. So it's kind of crazy. Obviously with the, the noise comes the traffic. And if you're in one of the big cities, the traffic is terrible. There's not much, there's not really any public transportation that's worth mentioning. There is a metro on the way, but it's not not really there yet. And it, the country really, really needs, really needs some, an injection of public transportation. Something along the lines of what Thailand has would be great. Although, I have no idea if local people will give up their motorbike because it's so much part of the culture. We shall see in the next five to 10 years. So what are some of the positives? Well, the weather's very predictable generally, so wherever you are in the country, you can kind of choose to base yourself where weather will best suit you. And it's, it's fairly predictable. It's not like the UK where maybe it's gonna rain for five minutes, maybe it's gonna rain for 48 hours. In Vietnam, you can generally, you generally know what's gonna happen weather-wise, and it does never normally rains for a long time. Although when it does rain, it really, really chucks it down. <laughs> Obviously, cost of living is, is still fairly low here, although it's going up quite rapidly. And it'd be interesting to see what happens in the next 12 to 24 months in regards to the recession. Obviously, most of the world, a lot of the world is heading that way or already in recession. and. We've seen a huge devaluation in the dong in the last month or so, but that was kind of a lag effect in coming anyway. Which I suppose is a good thing if you're earning US dollar or coming from outside Vietnam, but if you're doing business inside Vietnam, of course that's going to affect your imports and exports, your staffing costs, quite markedly. Inflation is not, nah, it's not too bad here. I mean, it used to run really, really hot, but where I work, they typically give the local staff between five and 10% annual salary increase. I think last year they gave them 7%, this year they got 5%, uh, which is coming from the UK, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> but my friends in Vietnam tell me it's pretty normal to get 10, 12% a year increase in salary, which sounds quite inflationary to me, but there we go. So how do we compare to our neighbors? Well, 
Bangkok, just under an hour flight away and very very different now so I was in Bangkok a couple of months ago I uh, hadn't been there for over two and a half years and I was really surprised at just how modern it's, it's become it's a lot quieter and generally it has a lot more modern facilities and amenities so if that's what you're looking for but you still want that kind of Asian flavor and being able to travel around then Bangkok is a very good bet at the moment Thailand has its own issues though. Uh, it's kind of a funny one and I, I've, I've talked about this before but I kind of feel a bit freer in Vietnam. I feel like it's a live and let live kind of attitude here and people just don't don't really care what I do. Not that I do anything, anything bad or anything crazy but people just not really bothered you know and that's nice. But in Thailand it was like everywhere I went, everywhere I went to a details for Wi-Fi and in fact, it just felt, it felt a bit more intrusive, a bit more of a police presence. So I'm not sure how comfortable I'd feel living there long term. I'm sure it'll be fine, but... I know Vietnam also is kind of a bit of a police state. There's a lot of undercover police here. Due to the nature of the government. But as a foreigner here, it's not something that you're going to really see or, you know, have any issues with unless you do something, something bad. So that brings me on to like things like law enforcement, bureaucracy, administration. And it's really, really tricky because obviously unless you're fluent in Vietnamese, it's gonna be very difficult for you to, con to converse with anyone in a technical way. And it's very hit and miss dealing with the police here. They're just not very interested in dealing with foreigners and it's, you know, it's hassle for them, language barrier and slightly more higher profile and they don't want the attention but unfortunately, if you, if you are involved in a traffic accident, for example, if you have issues with your house, uh, if you have health issues, for example, in a hospital, um, you're kind of out of luck and you're on your own. There's no, the legal recourse here is not very transparent. And, you know, you don't have the same kind of more transparent rights that you would have in other countries. And you just don't know the way things are going to go. So that's something to bear in mind. And for me, like, I'd be very reluctant to have a family here just because of the added stress of, you know, the road, the traffic and schooling, healthcare. It's still all very much in a developing stage and I think very long and hard about coming here with a family. Although, what's this guy doing? Although, if you are very well paid, then you will be able to access the best schools and the best hospitals and you'll be able to fly to Singapore or Malaysia to get medical treatment if you need to so you know maybe it's not not too bad I do miss my home country I miss the peace and quiet I miss the fresh air I miss the politeness of the people like uh, you know British people similar to American on the whole very very polite and you, you kind of get that that drummed into you from the day you're born, you know. Your please and your thank yous, quiet, being quiet as a child, things like that. It's very important in Western culture, especially UK and US. And yeah, I do, I do miss a little bit, but every time I go back to the UK, it just feels so sterile and, and you know, I, I don't want to say boring, but I do feel it's kind of quietly oppressive in some ways. And, yeah, it's just CCTV cameras everywhere. I uh, you know taxation for everything, so road tax. Um, they would talk about taxing, you know, putting number plates and taxing bicycles, putting number plates on bicycles, taxing bicycles, and that's just crazy to me. Um, the government, as you probably witnessed, we've had three prime ministers in the last couple of months in the UK just kind of kind of crazy only one of those prime ministers was elected the other two were chosen by a very small group of people so hang on a minute where's the democracy there but it's a real mess politically and it, from the outside looking in it's, it's absolutely bizarre and you know I don't know what to make of it really but it doesn't really fill me with confidence in the system it needs a big overhaul but it's never gonna get it 
I don't want to go too deep into politics, but uh, I'm sure you, you can see from the news what's going on and draw your own conclusions. Do you need to speak Vietnamese? If you decide to move to Vietnam, well, it, it would definitely help you, but you don't need to, you don't really need to speak it. And, you know, you're going to be making friends here, local friends, and they're going to be helping you, hopefully, with things like housing and stuff like that. I'm lost down a hem. This is one of the things I really like about this city is you just take a, a little turn off the main road, which is crazy, and you come down these little kind of alleyways, which are like a maze, and it's quite peaceful. And it's such a contrast from the just a, a few meters up there. Countries like Malaysia and Cambodia, I'm not, I'm not particularly familiar with. I've visited both briefly, but Cambodia obviously is still very poor. They do have a better visa options than here, though. I think for around three hundred dollars, you can get a one-year business visa in Cambodia. So I've been told. But that's just got its own set of problems, and things like healthcare, general living standards are very low. Again, and you've got a lot of poverty there, which has its own set of issues. Malaysia is pretty good, you can get a second home. Malaysia has a second home program, I believe. So again, it involves a certain amount of investment in the country, but then you're able to get a, a visa, own property there. And I think after a few years, you can actually get a passport and residency. And that's one thing in Vietnam, which is disappointing. You'll never be recognized as a, a full, full time, full time, as a permanent, sorry, permanent resident. Uh, there's not really anywhere you can get a passport here. And I'm kind of a prime example of that. So I've been living here for over six years. I've been contributing taxes, everything else in the country. And I'm basically treated as a tourist. If my, if my work permit finishes tomorrow, I'll have like seven days to get out of the country. And my only option would be a tourist visa. And I think that's wrong when you've been paying like tens of thousands of dollars into the system for many years. And you've been contributing as well through your day-to-day -day spending. I think there really should be some change there to recognize long-term expats or anyone who you know, decides to live in Vietnam for say four or five years. Back out into the craziness. So this is lunchtime and not particularly busy, but this road, Bai Tang Hai, I think, oh no, Khao Tang, will be absolutely rammed later. Not too bad at the moment. So to sum it up then briefly, why did I choose Vietnam over other countries? Well, at first I took a chance, I ended up staying. Then the main reason was work. But I think factors such as cost of living, uh, the people, and feeling of freedom that you get here kind of all contributed into the reason why I decided to stay. I may or may not be here forever. <laughs> Probably not, but watch this space. As I get older, I'm kind of craving a bit more peace and quiet and fresh air. Hence a potential move to somewhere a bit quieter and a bit more less polluted. 